Hey, before we get started, I just want to give a huge thank you to the YouTube members on our top three tiers. Our world champ, A, Triple Crown champ, Parma Chisel, Grand Slam champ, Freak Maniac, 90210, and Raz. Huge thank you guys for that support over on the YouTube side. Cannot wait for you guys to uh, start this show. So here's some Not Cool in High School with some music by the Converse Kid. Let's get it going. This is a Ben Frank Connection presentation. What is going on? We are back. ABJP presents Not Cool in High School, episode 128, The Terminator with Sonny Defarge. Very excited for this one. This is our first guest on Not Cool in High School. Uh, this movie to review will contain spoilers. This movie's old. I'm sorry, but we will put it in there. We're going to try some things out. Like I said, I'm still finding myself when it comes to making this brand and making this content. I'm very, very pumped for it. If you guys are in the chat, make sure you say hi to us. If you uh, are listening to this later in your car, take a screenshot of it. Post it on social media and be like, hey, man, I really thought this episode was cool. Maybe this is another movie you should do. Uh, just before we get into anything, just like the Terminator, we will be back because Mr. Defarge himself has agreed that we are going to tackle this entire franchise. Not tonight, but throughout the course of the history of the uh, Not Cool in High School movie reviews. And other ones you can look forward to, our next ones coming up throughout the month are going to be Not Cool in High School Horror, where Harleen Lopez will join us talking about Saw. Uh, this one I'm really pumped for because here's the thing. I like to be challenged. Terminator is a movie I remember watching, but it's not a franchise I really dove into. Sci-fi and horror are not my brands, but I now that I'm older and I feel like I can process them better because as a child, a lot of this went right over my head. Uh, and re-watching them as an adult, I think I'm, re, I'm having a more of an appreciation for them. Um, so it's a lot of fun. But here's a, a, a review. It's going to be an album review. And if you look, these two burly dudes are going to review 1989 Taylor's version, myself and Robbie Radke. Will ABJ become a Swifty? Probably. Probably is how is how that answer goes. Uh, and then to end our movie reviews at the end of this month will be myself and Kim Rose as we talk about the movie Megan. So that one's going to be a lot of fun. Great, great content coming up. And we still have interviews to drop. Tornado Tag podcast, a lot of great reviews. Tons of five questions with ABJ. I am grinding here. Uh, if you want to grab your merchandise, you have two more days. WrestleMania merchandise for the ABJ podcast is available. Um, and they will be available until the 13th. And then two new logos will drop on the 13th. And then you'll have the entire month uh, to grab those. So that's pretty much the housekeeping. Uh, make sure you guys hit the like, so share, subscribe. If you're watching on the listening to the audio, there is ways that you can do that as well. But let me bring in my guest without further ado. The, the legend, ta tag team specialist, solo specialist, professional wrestler, making his, I think this is our first guest who has appeared now on two different platforms since the rebrand. Let's bring in Mr. Defarge. What's going on? Greetings to you and to everybody at home or in the car or wherever you're listening. Uh, and thanks for having me. And I think it's super cool that I'm the first person to do two different, uh, two of your podcasts. I had no idea. Yeah, this is the, uh, well, Harleen would also, so there's a few people who have been on the major podcast, the main podcast, but now kind of crossing over to the other brand, uh, you are the first one to do it. So you'll be back. Cool. First. <laughs> cheesy cheesy first. catchphrase there. <laughs> but uh, so we, we, when I was pitching this idea and I knew I was going to do this, uh, we were talking at cheeseburger school and I was like, man, I would really love to, to have people on. Cause I know there's a lot of people in the business who aren't very good or they don't like talking about themselves. They don't like doing the traditional wrestling podcast. And I get that. And I understand why there's a lot of 
podcasters out there who don't do a very good job and it leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. And the last thing they want to do is regurgitate the same interview a hundred times. I get all that. So I'm trying to find a creative way to get people exposure as well as maybe not talking about everything professional wrestling. And we can talk about things we're passionate about. And when you heard that idea, you're like, I need Terminator. Like, I don't like I'll fight whoever wants it, but it's mine. I get Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, and I'll do, I, I'll do all of them in one day. If, if, if we have to, I'll do one of them at a time. I, I will, I, I will be here at nine o'clock next Thursday also to do Terminator two. If you want, I'll be here, <laughs> n- uh, not nine o'clock tomorrow. I'll be in the car, but you, I mean, you get the deal. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Very passionate about it. So why, why is Terminator this movie for you? What, when you had all the choices of what was out there, first dibs of pretty much any franchise, any movie, uh, you chose Terminator. What, what, what makes this movie stand out so much for you? So for me, and I think I, I think I talked about this on, on the other podcast, but for me growing up, we, I was in a very like movie centric family where we watched movies all the time. And it was, it was so normal for us to watch almost a different movie every night. And I thought that was just what people did to the point that I would make movie references throughout elementary school, throughout middle school, throughout high school that people did not understand. I still do it to this day. It's a thing. Yeah. And, you live in movie and, quotes, we're going to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so for whatever reason, I guess maybe, I guess maybe this just is how it worked in the nineties, but I gravitated towards Arnold Schwarzenegger a lot. Um, he was, is like one of my heroes his political beliefs and stuff like that aside like his journey and what he did and and his his movies it it, he was just he's just one of my heroes and it started out probably not even with terminator because movie came out in 1984 spoiler alert i wasn't there to see it in 1984 um but i had seen Arnold Schwarzenegger movies beforehand. And he was already somebody I was a huge fan of because of things like true lies and last action hero and stuff like that. And then the family is just like, Oh, let's, you know, let's watch these, these, these Terminator movies. And it was probably because Terminator two was on TV or something. Yeah. Terminator and so we watched one that, that. I feel like everyone grabs onto. Right. Yeah. And, and so we watched, we watched that and I said, Oh, an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Sweet. Awesome. And spoiler alert for those that haven't seen all of these or know anything about them. He's the, he's the good guy in the, in the second one. Yes. And <laughs> I and forgot like, watching this one <laughs> and, and like the, the music and the visuals and the, the everything about it. Like I just got sucked into it and I watched it so many times that I broke the tape. And then I learned that the movie was called Terminator two because there was one before it. <laughs> When you're young, you're kind of dumb. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then I, have, I, you know, end up watching the first one, obviously, and I'm like, can't wait to see Arnold Schwarzenegger save the day. Can't wait to see. I can't wait to see my my favorite hero, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then he comes up and he shows up and he's naked and he's doing his thing and then he punches Bill Paxton through the chest and you're like, that's not right. <laughs> and and then the movie turns into this horror movie and it's completely different and it flips everything that I knew on its head. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, this is a big long winded way of me saying one, uh, it taught me a lot about how storytelling can be way, way different, uh, just from one movie to another, or even with the same actor playing sort of the same character. And two, it was, it was really just a, a, a part of a family thing for me because that's what we did. My favorite part uh, about tackling these movies now and doing reviews of music and albums and horror movies is is I, at the end of the day, I'm a very pro wrestling centric channel. So even when we deviate and we drink beers or we smoke or we talk movies, a lot of wrestling terminology. So the whole time watching this movie, I'm like, when is Arnold for babyface? Like, how do they flip him? <laughs> I, I had to, I had to, I had to choke it back. I was like, say good guy, say villain, say bad yeah. guy, say no, hero, you say these things. You can lean into it. But uh, so so we're two gonna, on the nose. Yeah, we're gonna try some stuff here. So one of the first things. Yeah. Um, I was on TikTok and I was I was talking to a bunch of horror creators and I was like, yo, what do you guys do for your movie reviews if you're going to do them in a longer form podcast that you would recommend for someone who's probably starting this out? And they were all super helpful. The, the horror community on and movie review t- community on TikTok is awesome. I love it. Like everyone hates on TikTok, but if you find your niche of people and the things you're into, you will find good content on there that is 
just cater to you as a human. Another person trying to get me to download TikTok. Yeah, it's it's awesome. If you're if you have if you're in the sci-fi, if you're in the movies, horror, wrestling, it's it's a it's a fun community. But they told me about this website called Does the Dog Die.com. Now, the reason why I want to put this move this website over, weird name, but essentially what this website does is if you are have if you're someone who your partner or your kids or anyone you may know who has certain phobias, triggers, things that they they Maybe they not that it would turn them off from the movie, but at least they can mentally prepare themselves for what they're about to see. It is a cool, useful tool to help people out. Um, so this one, the first one, it does does the dog die? Yes, two dogs are killed, but uh, but the, it is an off screen kill, mm -hmm. right? So that's something. Um, another one they say here, abandonment. If you're if you're having issues with abandonment, you're gonna have a little bit of an issue here. Uh, if if stalking is a problem for you. This movie might 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 trigger that. It might. Um, it might. <laughs> um, does an animal die once again? Yes. There's going to be a dead rat as well as to two guards dogs that you're going to hear. It's only a whimper. They insinuate the death, but it's not like uh, um, in your face. Um, once what about again, the lizard? They, I don't think the lizard actually dies, does it? But it, I mean, it definitely gets abandoned. It does, yeah, there is a lizard abandonment. Yes, there is. In, <laughs> um, in, involuntary abandonment. But yeah, bro, that lizard. We'll get to it. Uh, is someone restrained? <laughs> yes, there is restraints. Uh, is someone's mouth covered? Yes. Uh, is there shaving or cutting? Yes, you're gonna see some cut stuff in there. Are there any hands damaged? Yes. Um, is someone crushed to death? Yes. Is there burning alive? Yes. Uh, is there body horror? Yes. Does someone get squashed? Yes and breaking bones unconsciousness like stuff like that finger toe mutilations it's all in there so if that's something you could check it out yourself but check it out does the dog die uh is is something you should look out for i didn't go through all of them i just kind of got some of the key ones but uh is it a website you can use that i i learned out from those curators so thank you guys all so much and i but didn't mean to laugh so hard at the name yeah some but of them are just yeah the name it's, yeah, it, it's tough, right? So, like me watching a movie, I'm just so desensitized that like I see stuff and I'm like, wow, but it just doesn't click to me the same way it does somebody else. And that doesn't make right. I don't want to diminish someone of saying, well, oh, you're a baby, don't watch the movie. But it people still want to consume art. And uh right. and yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's gonna upset you, then get the warning. Absolutely. That's why we have yeah. trigger warnings now like absolutely not to sound too like over sensitive whatever like people can get triggered by whatever and so trigger warnings are necessary yes just don't start putting uh, them before the movie though in the movie theater that might be a little weird yeah yeah because it could spoil things uh fun fact oh. i just watched a movie for the first time on uh hbo max i was like yo i want to go back and watch some mel brook movies and i put on blazing saddles before <laughs> the movie even starts they do a 45 minute video essentially saying sorry <laughs> like, like we're sorry for what you're about to see and i was like i get why but it's like if you don't know by now <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but there, there's a little bit of tongue and cheek to blazing minutes. saddles yeah it's no, long course. it's a long it, it feels like it was an hour i'm like does this movie start anytime and you can't skip it it's it was rough but Terminator, The Terminator, is a 1984 American science fiction film co-written, directed by James Cameron, and co-written and produced by Gail Ann Hurd. Uh, it stars Arnold Schwarzenegger as The Terminator, a cybernetic assassin sent back in time from 2029 to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor, Linda, Linda Hamilton, whose urban, uh, urban son will one day save mankind from extinction by Skynet. Um, the movie was released in October 26, 1984. It runs for 107 minutes. It is a United States film. It, the budget was $6.4 million and box office made $78.3 million. Now, I'm curious of what that is now later on when it comes to uh, like toys and collectibles because this... This is a mm. franchise that has a lot of toys, a lot of collectibles, video games, uh, mo other spin-off movies, books, comic books. Uh, I'm probably missing a whole bunch of stuff. Like you name right. it, there's probably video games, lunch boxes, yeah, <laughs> spin-offs. Uh, now, being a Terminator fan, did posters. you ever collect the toys or anything like that? I didn't, uh, and I 
I can't say that it's because I didn't want them. Um, it's just whenever I can't remember ever even seeing anything like that. And it's probably because again, the movie came out in 84. So, uh, I wasn't around to see it, uh, not to give away my, my age too much. I like that the internet has no idea how old I am. Um, and then those, Terminator those 2 came out in 91. Our fans are crazy. Uh, they I are. learned how nutty they are through Frightmare, <laughs> where he said, like, they put your addresses and stuff on the line at one point in time. Like, he had to go and get that taken down. Like, yeah, real they, name, they put, address, shoot job. Like, they put the entire roster's real names on Wikipedia. And somebody went in and like filed a complaint and they were like under Chikara contract, we have to protect our identities. So you have to take this down or you're violating a contract. And it was down that day. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I was the person that did it. I went, I went and I said, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't that want them to know. They misspelled my name anyway. <laughs> they misspelled my real name anyway. And I was, I was insulted. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Now take I have to down. <laughs> take it down. <laughs> I almost wanted to leave it and just be like, well, they're still not going to find me. Yeah. Because it wasn't the, it wasn't like the first name was misspelled. Like, it's not like I'm Jennifer with two N's and they only put it with one. Like, my whole ass last name was misspelled. I was like, okay. Well, if the term not, ever not came a little bit. You, there's, a, there's a whole phone book worth of people that are going to die before they even find out who you are. Oh, you think I'm in the phone book? How do you, <laughs> how do you even get in the phone book? Is that even still a thing? It, it, I, that's the funniest thing that I'm going to call back to of what they thought the future was going to be. Cause we're only like what, 20, 30 years or, or from when the time of this is going to happen movie wise to where we are now. You're right. Yeah. right. <laughs> it was it, cause he came from 2029. No, 20. Yeah. Yeah. 2029 AD. 2029. So it was 45 years in the past. Yeah, they thought forty-five years later that he would still have like, access to phone books. Phone books. And, yeah. and all that. I mean, I guess <laughs> that could just be the genius programming of like, hey, back then they had phone books and you could just look it up. Meanwhile, like five years, ten years after that movie came out, there was GPS, and so yeah, <laughs> he he could have. Oh, but well, there wouldn't have been satellites. Oh, I mean, oh. I'm sure there were satellites at that time, right? But they wouldn't have been GPS satellites. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, so you yeah. you'd be able to you'd send out the signal and just be like crickets, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so you need the phone book. See, it's smart in its own way. It it, it finds a way. <laughs> it finds a way. Yeah. Um, what else have we got here when it comes to? This? I think that's pretty much it when it comes to that. I'll, we'll get some fun stuff later. I do have some yeah. did you know facts and, and 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 stuff like that that we will get into. Shame. Um, this is another franchise too, where like as I got older, I'm like, oh, it's the Terminator. Like it is T one thousand T eight hundred. Like people get super super yeah. into this. Um, but in this movie, he's he's considered something completely different. What we'll get into. So the beginning of the movie kicks off. It's just L A twenty twenty nine A D uh, future dystopia. And one of the things that caught me in this scene, there's a lot of skulls. Like there's just skulls yeah. everywhere. Like just filled. The streets are filled with skulls. Not one rib cage, yep. not one nope. arm bone, just skulls yep. everywhere. <laughs> well, you would think, that, well, obviously the skulls are going to be the top of the piles because that's the top of <laughs> the body, right? Yeah, yeah. So nuclear war happens. Your your skin and your musculature and all that gets vaporized. And then just like in a cartoon, it's all just going to fall straight down, right? Yeah. So naturally the top of all the piles, you just don't just see loved, the other stuff. I just loved all the skulls. <laughs> it was just like, we need more skulls. Budget skulls <laughs> paint them up um but yeah get the plastic department on it skulls. <laughs> the machines on have it. taken over after a a nuclear war is what they tell you in the beginning um and you see humans and and new and these robots kind of fighting each other uh it then cuts to 1984 uh a garbage man is take doing his just doing his job and lightning and a portal opens up and a really large bodybuilder naked Arnold Schwarzenegger appears in the alley. Yep. Imagine telling that story. Yeah. <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger already a very standout human being. And then he's just in LA. Even in LA. Forward, yeah. Naked just appears in a portal. And this guy's like, what is like, I just want to do my job. <laughs> you just ignore it. It's LA guys. You just trash. <laughs> um, trash. 
So okay. he he walks and we find, I guess, 1984 punk scene. These kids are just up to no good punk kids. Um, yeah. Now, once again, I'm watching this movie in the mind state of uh, Terminator 2, where Schwarzenegger is a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not a good guy move. Uh, so he, he essentially uh, goes to fight them. Uh, you do some subpoenas here if you pay attention. There's a little bit of yep. swanging Arnold. Um, you just see a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> um, so he he kills these kids. They stab him, and you realize really quickly that Arnold is a he is something else. He has superpowers yep. of some kind. He has super strength. He's not really being damaged by these guys, and he was able yep. to not only kill them, but he essentially goes inside their chest and pulls a beating heart out. And what you said earlier. Bill Paxton makes a a, a cameo yeah. here with some yeah. really he cool just walks up, He walks up, kills Bill Paxton, Brian Thompson, and the third one. I don't remember who the third one is. Brian Thompson's <laughs> been a bit player in everything you've ever watched, and Bill Paxton with the uh, with the unique distinction of being the only person I would argue who's been killed by an alien, a predator, and a Terminator. Holy shit! That is a trifecta. Bill Paxton did it. Yep. People say Lance Henriksen. Which Lance Henderson did not get killed by a predator in Alien versus Predator. He died of cardiac arrest before the predator did anything. And in Aliens, he's uh, a cyborg, uh, so he wasn't allowed to begin with, and he's still kicking in Alien Three. So obviously, it didn't happen. Yeah, Bill Paxton. Not to get too sidetracked. Is, not to get too. That, side is, that is a great. Fo- did you know? So when you guys go and you ever play trivia somewhere, and they say name the actor killed by these three creatures, now you know. And it's all because of Mr. Defarge, and you're welcome. Like I said, people will say Lance Henriksen. So if you say that, that's probably the answer that's on the card. Fight them. And they're wrong. Yes. They are wrong. And that's exactly and we gave you the tools to to prove them wrong. Um, so yes, and then kind of cuts to another scene here. Another time travel is pop- popping through a portal. Once again, all naked as well. The whole time I was like, Naturally. was there a reason for the nakedness? But there th- was. they actually do. They actually do. Um, he shows up in an alley, uh, walks up, just steals a homeless guy's pants. They don't really show him taking the pants off of the homeless guy. They kind of cut and he's pulling them up. That would have been a funny yeah. scene. <laughs> give, me your, been. give me your pants. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's, the cops he's chase him. it was obviously late at night. He was probably just tired. He probably just had to shimmy him off of him. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> That's a choice. You stole my pants. <laughs> you take a homeless man's pants. That's a, that's a bold move. It's a real bold move. It might almost first be better pants than you pantsless. Yeah. First, first pair of pants you see. It's not like he was in a store five minutes later. Yeah. Where he changed <laughs> his pants anyway. And now this poor homeless guy has no pants. He could have. Uh, that should be a deleted scene. He went around. He went back into the alley. He was like, sorry. Yeah. Here's your pants. Back. Here's your pants. And I a I like, have to piss in them. Here's your, here's your piss pants. <laughs> Um, so yes, he does run, goes into a, a, a store, puts on different clothing, um, yeah. and, and, and a lot of product placement in this movie because he steps down from the changing booth and this dude's rocking some Nikes. Uh, yes. And, and I, I kind of researched them. These Nikes are a big deal. Like they, they're called the Nike terminators, but at the time they were called the Nike vandals. Uh, they retail. They're kind of like Air, the Nike Air Ones. I think they're like a spoof of them. But the actual shoe, from my research, is the Nike Vandals, um, and they're they retail about fifteen hundred bucks. If you want them, a pair of those right now. It is essentially well, I do high now. Top, it's essentially a high top <laughs> jor- a high top Air Force One. They're cool looking shoes. I would wear them. Um, but yes, and not only to- not only you gonna see the movie in the movie once, but they make sure to show them later on once again. Um, yes. Now Real it quick. cuts. Yeah, when you're jumping through this, uh, you you do the you do the did you know that's at the same time as you're jumping through stuff, or do no, you no, jump I'll, back we'll, later? We'll, we'll go back and do the did you know that's later. But if you have, cool. them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna insert stop. them. Oh well, I was just gonna do the did you know that about about when the dude comes back in the alley, whose yeah. name we eventually learn. Uh, but uh, did you know there were supposed to be two guys, like in the original in the original script, two guys were gonna come back in time into that alley. Really? Was is that is that one of your did you knows no, that no. you've got right now? I was down. actually do the did you knows like on the fly at the end, but if you have them, please oh, tell them. Oh, so but I don't want to steal your thunder from ones you've no, got. No, no, this is why this uh, is why you're the guest. <laughs> this is your movie because you know it more than I do. So there was originally, and and I might be remembering some little details incorrectly. There was originally yeah. supposed to be two humans sent back. Spoilers. There was originally supposed to be two 
guys sent back into that alley, but be, and it was supposed to sort of illustrate uh, how like unstable the time displacement technology was. And he, the second guy was supposed to appear like partially inside of like a fire escape. Like oh. the fire escape ladder was supposed to be like through his body. And it was just going to be like, a, Oh, I'm here and I'm dead. Now you're on your own. <laughs> Yep, I think it was just supposed to be like a like a here's the chaos of the sort of stuff that they had to go through to get here. This was their only shot was these two guys. Oh, now their only shots this one guy because they goofed. Um, but yeah, just a fun little fact of uh, there was it supposed is, to yeah. be a second guy, and they Could I think imagine, they just imagine the 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 uh, the forensic scientist in 1984 uh, why wondering <laughs> right. how a a a naked man ended up in a in, embedded in a fire escape, and you're like right. Right, especially if it's the ladder, because you're just going to see the two holes where the ladder is, yeah. where the where the body is. You're not going to see where the rungs go. So it's like so they took the rungs scene. off, stabbed him, and then put the rungs back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I but I think, I think they still accomplished <laughs> right. But I think they still accomplished the the chaos of of the machinery that they were using because he did appear like 15, 20, 30 feet in the air and fall. <laughs> Like, like they got the, you know, like maybe in the future, that's a pile of skulls. Yeah. yeah. And they were like, oh, we know that elevation is here from our topographical map of skulls. And then they were like, oh, there's no skulls there in 84. Our bad. Yeah. yeah. And skulls. So there he goes. Landing. Yeah. They're, it's like, a. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, it, so this movie does when I'm watching it, I'm like, all right, it's definitely eighties, nineties movie here. You know what I mean? It, there's a lot of cuts and I'm thinking to myself, like, are they going to be able to tell this story? Like, is this going to be a movie that you look back on? You're like, we look back on it because it just aged. It didn't age well. Like they didn't do a good job finishing a story. The CGI is not the greatest. And and as it was kind of cutting, like insert guy here, insert guy here. Now Sarah Connor insert, insert. And I was like, it's very jumpy, but I will say as the movie goes on it, the pacing's pretty decent. It's a good right. paced movie. Um, so yes, it's going to cut to Sarah Connor who uh, is working in the most, the rudest, restaurant and most dysfunctional restaurant of all time these customers don't give a fuck about her yeah. well-being as a human like she's yeah. lately trying to give food and someone's like ma'am i'm ready to order and you're like who <laughs> right. speaks to humans like that like right we've come along people pe people anybody watching this in your in your 50s or 60s or 70s uh, you sucked. You was sucked. it was it like that in 1984 <laughs> Did, would people do that yeah that's because so they don't rude. now yeah, they, I've been to a that, diner in New York City, and it's not like that. No. I mean, New Jersey, that like, no, yeah, was that the trope like that? of the like, '80s? You're just like you just degrade restaurant right? workers. Yeah, right. horrible. And then the child, and then the child putting what was it, mashed potatoes or, or ice cream in her in her pocket. Yeah, crazy. Just like <laughs> so disrespectful. Like even yeah. kids are like, we can degrade them, right? They're just they're just restaurant workers. Like <laughs> you have an apron on, you are subhuman. Yeah, yeah, that's literally have some mess or, potatoes. Here's my theory: head cannon. That kid felt bad for her, so he wanted to give her a little snack. You know what? Maybe he was ahead of the curve. He, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So now Arnold. It cuts back to Arnold. He's uh, he's stealing cars. He's stealing uh, um, guns. Goes into a gun shop. And he's asking for lasers, and then, but, he, but he knew every other gun. Uh, blows the guy away. Takes pretty much whatever he wants. That's a plot hole to me, by the way. Asking for the phase plasma rifle in a 40-watt range in 1984. He's going to yeah. know that they don't have that. He has to, right? Like, he's... I mean, I get that they had to get it in there that, like, ooh, he's from the future. Yeah. Because you don't know yet at this point. Yeah. Uh, so you just hear gibberish. And if you're not a gun person, you're going to hear gibberish through the whole scene anyway. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, that was but, me. Yeah, but but uh, <laughs> thanks, video games. Um, but uh, yeah, the the scene where he steals the car because uh, he's in the he's in the the punk biker get up. He punches out the window of the station wagon. He jumps in, does that. That was the last scene filmed. Um, again, I don't know if this is one of your tidbits. No, but that was please. the last scene filmed, and it was just uh, it was just James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger present, and they did not have a permit. Cause they did all this guerrilla filmmaking without permits and all this stuff back then. That's why the budget was only $6 million. They did all this guerrilla filmmaking, all these like meet up in secret at 3 AM at the location film, everybody get back in the car, drive away, like sort of situation. That's awesome. And that was the last scene filmed. And they were so worried about getting caught right at the very end 
that while he's punching out the window of the car and he's getting in and he's doing his thing, Arnold Schwarzenegger's actual clothes, like his personal clothes, were just in a neat little pile behind the car so that as soon as they were done filming, he went around the car, changed, and they left. Interesting. It was just James Cameron. He he had to film it himself. It, it was so you know what was I the very last thing they did. The three punkers clothing didn't match up to what Arnold was then wearing later. Like, like I don't That's think cool. any of those three guys would have fit in Arnold. Like Arnold wouldn't have fit into their clothes. Brian Thompson was a big guy. Yeah. Brian Thompson was a big guy and he almost has the exact same face as Arnold while also looking completely different. But I think he was the blonde punk. Yeah. Um, I, I might be, I haven't watched the first one in, in, in a little while, but, uh, he was, he was a bit, I, I would believe he could wear his like jacket. Yeah. I don't know that I believe he would have any of their shirts on or, or any of their pants. Yeah. The pants. Yeah. You know? that'd be wild. I have, but, um, I have a hard time believing he fit into any of their gloves. Very true too. Or Big shoes. Man. Oh my God. <laughs> Maybe he's got little feet. <laughs> yeah. The whole time he's like. Came back from the future and I can't I can't find socks. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um that's so the movie goes, I want to watch. Goes to yeah, the, the, I wanted to see everything that Arnold did to set up because there's other things that he sets up later on in the movie. You're like, why is he there? And you're like, how did he get that? So we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> but um he goes to the phone book, just throws the guy away from the phone book pages, goes through, and he starts going through all the Sarah Connors and goes to the first Sarah Connors house. This is all jumping around, so you suspend disbelief mm-hmm. that time mm-hmm. has passed. Um, goes to the first Sarah Connor, goes, are you Sarah Connor? She's like, yeah, kicks on the door, shoots her in the back, and uh, now we're on to the next scene. Um, but yeah, so now we're into another future scene. It's showing the man versus machine fight going on. There's a lot of rebel more skulls way more skulls um there's this guy and this girl are fighting and they're running through and there's like underground machine gun sets up and people are hiding inside rubble and little bases are going and they're running towards something he's trying to get to somewhere um this poor that's lady, five years from now yeah that, that might right. happen it could be it could be very soon um he throws a like a pipe bomb like an energy bomb we'll say and for some reason she feels she has to throw one too but if she would just waited like three more seconds, she throws a bomb and gets vaporized. And the guy's kind of like, then the bomb goes off and it destroys the entire robot. And the guy's like, well, she's gone. <laughs> and he just kind of runs away. Um, and then it flashes back to modern day. Um, and there's um, a weird. So now we're at Sarah and her friend or roommate ginger and they're at their house they're getting ready they're getting dressed up to go out uh, i guess they're doing like a double date or something's going on or she's gonna hang out with her guy and sarah's gonna go out on a date with this other guy uh she answers the phone and it's some just random dude dirty talking it's pretty strange uh <laughs> and she he, she mistakes like oh, okay let me put like she listens to way more than she probably should have before she corrects him uh and then you goes, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you though? Yeah. Like you have you have just from the looks of him, I, I can only assume it's Peyton Manning's dad on yeah. the phone talking, <laughs> and you're just gonna be like, I'm gonna mess with my roommate's boyfriend real quick. There's a weird dynamic to this friendship with these three. Well, well, well that I want to kind of dive into. Um They're so just she goes, comfortable. <laughs> very, very comfortable. He um he goes to she goes to give her the phone and she's for some reason she just lives in these Walkman. These goddamn Walkman it is like how like the equivalent of the 80s of our us now with our phones. Like these yeah. kids and their Walkmans, like they're just in their earbuds the whole time. The world is oblivious around them. Um, My kids so don't gives, listen to me. Yeah, she gives her the phone. Um, and then he just immediately like hello and just dives right back into his monologue of dirty. Oh, talking. he rehearsed. Oh, he rehearsed. <laughs> He rehearsed or he's got it written on the wall in front of him. Yeah, yeah. He knows exactly what's up. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to unbutton your blouse. Like He goes right unfazed, unfazed right. that the other right. roommate just caught him. And as soon as he hears the real voice, he's back in a dirty talk. He's 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 killing it. He's um, cuts now to a cop station. Um, and they're kind of talking about these two dead Sarah Connors. And they're like, get on the phone. Start calling Sarah Connors in the order. They're Good police work in the 80s here at this point. They realize that two Sarah Connors are dead. They realize right away that it's in order of the phone book. 
They don't know exactly why. They have the gun figured out. They realize that the gun kill the guy who has killed the, the ammo store is connected to these two. They have put some pieces together, <clears throat> pieces they together very early. Great police work in LA in, in the eighty four. Um, yeah. So as this is happening. The phone keeps ringing, but they're not paying attention to it. The other calls are coming in, you know, the 80s. You only have one call at a time, so they can't get a hold because <laughs> dirty talking chat over here is just going to town on the phone. Um, <laughs> Stara gets stood up by her date, so now she's going to get ready and go out and do things on her own because she's right. it's a Friday night, and why she, she let uh, it go to waste. And, and the date uh, on the answering machine, uh, that's James Cameron himself. Was it really? Yep, and it's funny because he's uh, he's ditching he's he's ditching uh, Sarah Connor or actress Linda Hamilton, who he would later marry. Really? Yeah. So James Cameron could have casted himself to be the father uh, of of John Connor, the 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 prota- the hero later on in the future. Miss yeah, he could James. have because he's because he's he was just he was there directing his future ex wife. So yeah. Uh, yeah. She has a pet iguana for some reason that that's pertinent yeah. to the scene. Um, and this iguana, if she gets her face, I've owned an iguana. They bite, and when they bite, it doesn't feel amazing. And she's just insisting on kissing this thing, and its mouth open wants to fuck oh, her up. Yeah. Oh, oh I would. I would yeah. kiss that thing right on the face every day. <laughs> every day. Uh, this thing. What's the iguana's her? name? I don't remember. Oh, the iguana's got a name. You. Oh, it's got a name. I know it does. Someone Google it, put it in the chat. Um, I yeah. can't see the chat, but you keep watching the chat. So she uh, she then leaves, uh, gets on her motorbike or whatever she was driving. I forget at the time. Little, it's leaves. like a little moped. Yeah, yeah. And the, the futuristic human dude sees her in his car, and now he's in pursuit. So now we have one futuristic guy following Sarah while other futuristic arnold i just called him arnold the whole time because i didn't like he's arnold schwarzenegger right like he didn't have a character name we didn't call him the terminator he has a arnold. character he's the terminator yeah it's, it's at right. this point in time he's we don't know what the terminator is yet we're we're putting right. it all together unless the movie right. and at this point in time you. for those for those watching it the first time you don't know they're from the future yet you don't know what these visions are that you're seeing you don't know that one's a machine i have to remind myself that all the time um, which is why this is also one of my favorite franchises to like introduce people to mm-hmm. because you sit and you're like, Oh, you've never seen any of them. And like, no, it's like, do you know the premise? And they're like, yeah, kind of. And it's like, come here. <laughs> it's one <laughs> of those things you have to know the premise. Cause even if I'm not a giant sci-fi person, I'm not a giant, like any of that style of movie, but even movies I've never watched just because I'm very embodied in pop, pop culture references this this movie bleeds into so much pop mm-hmm. culture and other aspects that it's it's something you have to know the premise of. Like you know yeah. Sarah, you know John, you know Terminator, you know T one thousand. You know what I mean? Like those those right. are the key points. You know some quotes from this movie, um, which they try to sneak a bunch in, and they get a few <laughs> of them to land, but not all of them. <laughs> There's one at the end that I feel like they're like, out of all the quotes in this movie, this is gonna be it. And it just falls flat. No one ever uses it. <laughs> we'll get nope. to that in a moment. Um, yeah. If it's so, the one I think it is, I use it day to day. But y- yeah, <laughs> I feel like only diehards use that quote, but it's not one that was universally used very often. No. Um, so back to the cop station. There are a lot of bouncing around. Uh, the, the another another Sarah has been found dead. Um, and, and they're trying to call Sarah Connor again, and they kind of go to a voicemail. This scene confused me because I was like half in, half out. And the way I was watching this movie on free VTV, uh, you have to watch the commercials. It shows that the door is left open. Like Sarah left the front door open because then it shows a voicemail and then it cuts to uh, Ginger and Greg having sex while she still is wearing earbuds the whole time. Like she's like, all right, I'll have sex. But I'm not turning off my music. Um, These kids in their damn walkman. <laughs> and he like turns the volume up during. Yeah, yeah. He's like cool, and he just because he's probably dirty talking, and she's over it at this point. And that maybe that's his way of you know finishing the deed. And for her, she's over it, but she really likes this new album, so it's a compromise. They're they're yeah. they're they're meeting as a couple there. Forgot to pull this up. He like really lovingly embraces Sarah and gives her like a, a really not like a friendly kiss goodbye when they meet leaving the apartment as well. I don't know how the eighties were. I yeah. don't know what the eighties were like. 
Maybe that's just, I mean, it's, it's the eighties and it's LA. Maybe there's a little polyamory. I'm not judging. There's no judgment. It just, it was, no, it was nice no, to see. Not judging really at all. Close. It's yeah, just very close friends. People are, people are, are people, don't, people aren't like that no more. Yeah. And that's fine. Cause you know, COVID and everything, but, but people aren't <laughs> like that anymore in pro wrestling. We are, we hug each other all the time. Oh yeah. Um, you know what? But you that know was what? not a regular old, like a, what even is a friend kiss? Cause he like, get, and she did not seem to necessarily even want yeah, it. It, but she like, didn't, it was, a, it was, she didn't fight it. Yeah. And it was laughing. And yeah, yeah. It was like a move your hair back, almost cheek neckish. Like he went, yeah. there, was, there was a lot there. There was, that, when that needs to be dissected, but going back to the wrestling it, thing, as, as someone who, who has, you know, is either on production or commentary or just a fan of wrestling. When, when you go out there and you put a performance on and you guys, especially someone like you, like where you, you, you leave an emotion and you bring a character and there's more than just watching two competitors in their wrestle there. You're, you're, you're embodying a story. You're in, you're, you're leaving something there. And for me, as someone who consumes it, like after a match, like you want to be like, yo, let's, like you just, like not just performed but like or wrestled you performed you left art in there and like an embrace after a match is it, there's not i don't think there's anything better than it it's almost it's better than just saying you had a great match if you're getting hugs that's a big deal my problem yeah. i always forget yeah. is you guys just performed and you're drenched and then i go in for that hug and i'm like why did i do that <laughs> the, the the number of people that i have hugged <laughs> after a match who are who either were in street clothes or just a shirt or a jacket or whatever of any kind while while just going i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i is probably hundreds of people yeah you don't I've realize you just like i'm sorry i'm so sweaty yeah i'm sorry i'm so sweaty but it's in the moment so it's, it has to happen that hug has to happen because you just you did something so damn cool it's just like ah oh, and then you happens you're like oh no <laughs> but, <laughs> and i and i and I'm here to tell you, I am a hug uh, a receiver. I am not a hug giver. Yeah. So, like, if you come at me with that energy, you're getting it back. Yes. And you wanted it. So, if you come at me and you're like, we're going to hug, I'm like, cool, I'm really, really sweaty. Just so you know, boom, who, change your shirt. Go who's, shower. Uh, who's someone on the uh, on the wrestling scene? Weird segue, but I'm into this question. Weird. Uh, who's who's your favorite hugger? Like when someone embraces you, you see them first time at a show in a while, or just someone you look forward to, and you, you get that hug. They're like, man, I, oh. I look forward to their hugs. Let's see. De de there's definitely there's definitely something to say about Weber Hatfield hugs. Weber's a good a good hugger for sure, Great for hugger. sure. And you and you and you'd think, God, I'm so sorry if 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 he sees this, you wouldn't think you'd get that good of a hug yeah. from that like small of a package. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's just, you it's could tell he means it. Man. Yeah. You could tell he means it. Yeah. You know, it, he's, his hug is taller than he is. That's what it very is. Very much so. He's, he's very, he's short for his height. You see, yeah. uh, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, but he's literally, legitimately, he popped into my head immediately. Yes. Yeah, when when yeah. you asked and I was like, is there like, who else? J.S. Hawthorne. Well, I don't really know if you ever hug. got a, a J.S. Hawthorne hug. That's a good hug. Mm -hmm. Not a great mm -hmm. hug after a match. Very hairy man. Uh, eh. Not a pleasant hug post match, but just overall in general, very good hugger. Uh, you know who okay. I've seen for the first time in a while? Big Calix. Big Calix. Big Calix popped into my head too. Good. That's yeah. that's a that's a good hugger there. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'll throw I'll throw one curveball at you. All right. And and like I hope he watches this. If you put clips on online oh, for these, yep. use this one and tag him. Yep. Uh, Otis Coger, Otis Coger, great hugger that fellow. Great I clip. could, I could, uh, I could beat the crap out of him any day of the week and twice on Sunday. But I'd also hug him. All right, not Good weird Terminator that. hugs, Sarah Greg hugs, but maybe I'll kiss his knows? neck. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Give him a little smooth. <laughs> um, hey man, so his brother. Back, <laughs> we're back to the cop station uh, once again. Um, what do we got here? Kikoa, great hugger. I could, I could believe that as well. So they're having sex, headphones on. The doors are not jarred. at the police station. Not, not at the police, police station. station Greg and uh, and Ginger. Um, this because I thought when the door was left agape and they're like another Sarah has been killed. I thought that they thought Sarah was Ginger Dale. So that's where my brain went when I first watched it this time watching through. And then 
we'll get to a scene where I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, Sarah gets to the restaurant and then she hears on the news that a third Sarah now has been killed. And she goes to, and I thought in my brain, she's like, oh no, because they said the address and everything. They're really detailed about every detail of the Sarah Connor. So in my yeah. brain, I thought she, it was her address and maybe now she, her friend just was mistaken, mistaken as her and she freaks out. But then right. she calls her house and you realize then that now Arnold is there because he's killed that Sarah and now he's onto her house. Um, he beats up Greg, um, kills Ginger. And then as he's killing Ginger, he's thinking to himself, well, here's a quick question. If he were to kill Sarah, how would he know he got the right one? Uh, I, I think I think it was just a, it, 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 he's a machine. So he's working systematically. It's, yes. we know her name and we know what city she lives in. That's it. Uh, Kyle Reese says that. That's all they have. Name, city. That's mm -hmm. it. So he was just systematically going through all of them. If he had offed Ginger right there, and if Sarah had just been a little more flippant, the movie's over. Yeah. The movie's over. Because he thinks like he it. just killed that Sarah on the list. Because he thinks he just killed the, the, potentially the last Sarah on the list. I don't remember how many names there were in the phone book, but he just potentially killed, or at least he's not going to go back to that apartment. Of yeah. course, he could be watching the news later and find out, like, uh, crap. Yep. Now I now I have time. to I have to follow this this little lead down. So she right. calls, I gotta go be a carpet salesman now. <laughs> she uh. she la she calls her apartment and leaves a voicemail saying exactly her location which is kind of smart because as a friend she's saying hey here's where i am i'm safe yeah. this is crazy stuff happening i hope you're good yeah. if you are get out of the house because this guy is going to different places right and now where was she at a club what, what's the club the called club. i don't remember it's called oh, Tech Tech Noir. yeah yeah james cameron had that club built to film this movie there and he had to turn people away who thought it was a real club it's a cool looking club yeah, it still exists today. You can go there now. It's a jewelry store, though. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've never been there. I don't. Yeah. So, it, it, honestly, but it's it, apparently it, a jewelry store. The beginning store of the club is kind of like a movie Last theater. Like the girl sits out front in a little ticket booth, and then you go yeah, in. She, but it's like a cage. Yeah. It was Start a doing cool that at wrestling shows, people. Somebody. Yeah, build a cage. Start doing that at shows. Build a little yeah. cage where you're doing the tickets. Love it. Love it. The environment yeah. of that club was cool. I like the environment. Yeah. You kind of go in and it's just like open bar dancing. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's doing the, um, like the breakfast club, how Claire dances. It's like the running in yeah. place dance. It's a big, it was, a, yeah. it was the move. That was the move. That's the thing. Yeah. And, and, um, and a second thing about that scene, uh, do you remember the opening of the answering machine outgoing message in, in Ginger's voice? Doesn't she like it's a she jokes or something? She has like a little bit. Yeah, she says she says hello and then pauses and then she says, "Gotcha, you're talking to a machine." Got yeah yeah. Which yeah. At, which at the time Sarah was, because the only one that was there to listen was Arnold. Yes, good. Little, or the a, Terminator. The Terminator. That's a, I didn't I yeah. didn't I didn't put that connection together. That's good. Yeah. Did you ever and make so, a voicemail like that? Like a no. joke one, I did. No, I... My mom did not like it at all. So I had one. It was like me and my buddies, and I made the voicemail like, uh, like we're in a loud room, and I'm like, "What? Hold on, who is it? Who? Oh my god, shut up, shut up. Who is it? <laughs> who?" And, and my mom has sometimes no sense of humor. I just remember getting the first voicemail when I made that, thinking it was the funniest thing ever. And I was like, change that fucking thing right now. She hated it. And that's why I don't, I did, I'm like the wrong person is going to call me or something. It's like, an and like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm an aspiring pro wrestler. And I'm like, yeah, when I, uh, when I get that phone call from, from triple H, I want it to go. Hello. Got you, stupid. Like, <laughs> you I know, a, that was ten a, years ago. But I didn't have a future, so I didn't. I didn't care. I was just. My, yeah. I knew. I, I knew it was one hundred percent to get my mom. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But here's the cool thing with that scene is she she realized everything's kind of crazy when she's at this pizza shop, and then when she leaves the pizza shop, she realized now she's being followed. She she has clocked the the human guy, future time traveler dude, and he's stalking her. But also in that scene too. Another creepy dude. A lot of creepy dudes in this movie, but the guy who's standing next to her at the payphone is kind of like, 
giving her like the creep eyes, which really is on him. the phone too. No, he's just standing there. He's just, oh. Yeah. He's just standing there and he's just giving her like the, just staring at her like meat eyes, but it sets a tone of like, now she's paranoid because someone's yeah. going around killing everyone with her name. And every single person now that makes eye contact or looks her way, she's paranoid with. So it sets a cool yeah. tone that way. I, uh, and then it makes it more suspenseful now that this dude is following her. And then as she ducks into the club, uh, she makes that phone call and Arnold now knows where she is. Uh, once again, real fast jump cut. Well, she does call the police station and she's like, Hey, He's like, stay there. We're sending cops. You're going to be good. Just don't leave. Stay in public. Don't go anywhere near bathrooms or yep. anything like that. As this is all going down, immediate yep. jump cut. Arnold walks in the door. Yeah. Um, Can we talk about how 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 quickly the 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 detective, I think it's Traxler, um, how quickly he was like, oh, yeah, I know where that club is. Yeah, yeah. He knew quick. Yeah. Did not look like, like his type of scene, but I, I'm happy for yeah, that. I, I feel like he was like a closeted, like, like, tech fan like this is like that's where i go after work nobody here knows that yep and they're not gonna know that he's like you don't need to give me you the know? address it's I, like yeah i'm at tech noir he's like yeah i know the one drink i'll be right <laughs> i know the one i know the one <laughs> i love that for some reason <laughs> that's a good bit um this is probably my favorite scene in the movie this club scene it's the reveal it's the like yeah um the the mo the mo when he walks in he kind of does the handbrake to the guy at the door. Um, mm -hmm. And then when he's about to walk past her and she claw, like she ducks down to because she drops something and then he mm -hmm. passes by her. Mm -hmm. And then like his he, uh, Arnold's not really for me known as someone who's like a fantastic actor, but he does a good job playing a cyborg because in his cyborg brain, he has assessed the entire room. He's realized there's only calculation wise one other place that he didn't see and then kind of zeroes in on that. And then when he zeroes in on that, she zeroes in on Reese, which is the other time travel. We don't know his name yet. Mm -hmm. Zeroes in on Arnold coming at her. And at that point in time, Arnold has the red bead on her gun on her head. Yep. He's about to end her Reese shotgun blast. And then this entire club just gets torn upside down. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's shooting at everybody. Any female yep. at this point, anyone's getting blasted. They're trying to fight you. Well, now at that point, they're just people in between him and Sarah. Yeah, and he just wants that target. That's it. If I shoot this one, they'll fall. They're not on the way anymore. If I shoot this one, they'll fall. They're not on the way anymore. He's a machine. He's going through it systematically. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. There, which is good. The, the, the way he plays the machine is brilliant. Yeah. He does a fantastic job and, doing so. And and you got to think, what? how much of a fumble would it have been if the production company got what they want and he played Kyle Reese? Is that what they wanted to do? Mm -hmm. They wanted him to play Kyle Reese, and James Cameron was like, "That's not what I want." And then they were like, "No, no, no, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was just in Conan." So like, let Conan, Conan, Conan is the TV guy. Conan is the barbarian. Yes. Uh, that's how I'm going to differentiate. <laughs> if I'm pronouncing it wrong, tell me in the comments. Um, I don't care. Uh, he he was Conan. He's this up and coming. Th he was Hercules. Look at him. He's so jacked. He must be a good actor. Um, so they're, they're like, we want him. And he's like, I, I want my Kyle Reese to be an everyman kind of guy. And they were like, just go meet with him. And he said, fine. And he goes to meet with him. And Arnold's like, I read the treatment of the script or, or whatever it was. And, and like this Terminator character, this guy, like whatever he does, like he should make sure he does like things like this and make sure that he acts like this and make sure he does things like this. And so they left that conversation, both of them going, I think he should be the Terminator. It's a good move. It's a good move. But neither of them uh, from like a little interview with both of them that I saw a million years ago, neither of them said that to the other one because in Arnold's mind, James Cameron wanted him to be Kyle Reese. And in James Cameron's mind, Arnold wanted to be Kyle Reese because he wanted to be the hero. And but Arnold was just like, I want to do this Terminator gig. I want to do because it'll be fun. It'll be you know great. And I only have thirteen lines. Who needs more? Like, and what, what's, what's, what's easier than that? Very little lines. He doesn't have to <laughs> deliver them very well because he has to deadpan the thing, which is not his strong <laughs> suit. Is acting at that point in time. <laughs> He's the bodybuilder guy. He's booked for his look, but the small things that made him seem not human, he did very well. <laughs> like very well um yeah which is i don't know that like that was a scene like it's not only the reveal but it's also like the first time you really see 
like determined or in action like we're like yeah. he has a count like there's it was a it's overall i would say the best part of the movie for me but yeah. you realize and it's also the that, only shot that has both <laughs> that has both kyle reese and the terminator in frame wow yeah um uh, there's another one with both kyle reese and the terminator in frame it's the only shot that has both um uh the actors in frame arnold and um uh oh no michael bean did they shoot like different times all the time? Uh, no, they just are never, they're just never on screen together. Interesting. Cause the, cause I feel like it's because the Terminator is just this entity. It's mm. just this nightmarish thing that is just constantly pursuing. You cannot stop it. There's nothing you can do. Like that's it. And yeah. so it's always off on its own while Cal and Sarah are, here doing their thing like and it's think i think it makes a great amount of sense that the only time that they are in the same shot together is where kyle and sarah meet up yeah yeah because the then time, that's the it's in this, almost I'm like, like i'm sorry a little bit delay yeah the no. only thing that like i was the whole time i was like well how did like all right the first movie is setting a tone but like do they how do they set this like backstory like there's really no answers here i'm like and and i'm I, I at this point in the movie i i hit up on the remote to see the timestamp of how much time is left and there's yeah. like 45 minutes and i'm like bro i know nothing about this franchise <laughs> and there's not a lot of time left but yeah hold your horses i think they do a pretty good job it's good booking it's good booking this movie um, yeah, I mean, so seventy million dollars of box office also thought they did a good job, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's I think the way the storytelling is where it's we're gonna jump from these police guys investigating this thing to this naked guy in the alley to this waitress to this naked guy up on the hill back to the police back to this guy back to this girl back to this guy and they're just they're four different entities. And throughout the entire movie, they're just getting closer and closer and closer together. And as an audience, you know that they're getting closer and closer and closer together. And until until that very moment right there in tech noir, you don't know what's going to happen when they get there. You know, you know, Arnold's intentions. You know, the police's intentions and, you know, Sarah's intentions, uh, which is just to live. You don't even know what this other guy's doing yet. Mm hmm. You just know that he also went and grabbed a phone book and he also went and ripped the pages out. Uh, and he also stole pants from a homeless guy. Yeah. What and, is beat happening? Up, and beat up a cop and stole <laughs> and stole, stole a shotgun and like and got really so, nice Nikes and got some really nice. Ni I hope he held on to him. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, I think that's what, what keeps you watching. And you're like, it's an hour into the movie and it feels like, it feels like 15 minutes has passed because it's just yeah. it keeps jumping and it keeps making you go oh yeah what are these guys doing oh yeah what are they doing oh yeah this guy's still here with his trench coat and his shotgun tied to his arm you know uh but we get the first big quote of the movie the one that sticks through fun fact i thought this was an old quote it is not it is a kyle not originally no it is, come with me if you want to live Mm -hmm. Just wanted to put that in my notes because that's that's an icon that's been used in pop culture, in video games, movies, television shows, everywhere. Like, come with me if you want to live. But you know it from Arnold delivering it yep. later in the franchise, but mm -hmm. it was said in part one. So part one has two major, like we'll say phrases that are that are very, very synonymous with the franchise. Um <laughs> You learn here also, I kind of like doing my character sheets of like, all right, Arnold's superpower. He has super strength. He can take, he like, you can stun him. It's We're learning here. So like he could take a shot and it'll kind of like daze him for a second, but it's yeah. not long. Like he's going to get up and he's going to pursue. Um, and he's not, he's not opposed to running either. Like he's not like, yeah. hey, I'm just going to walk. I'll get you. I'll get, no, he's dead. Like that's terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah. He's essentially a, I mean, the terminator like when you like the name terminator has been used in pro wrestling in video games in movies because just exactly what that character embodied they are a tank right there's nothing you're doing to a terminator that's going to stop it at that point like, right. it's the embodiment of persistence yes that's what it is yeah um he, it's essentially he's on he's on at this point in time he's fucking unstoppable 
Uh, right. They steal more cars. There's a lot of stealing cars, a lot of car chases, a lot of count and mouse. This this movie is very yeah. run, 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 run. There's not a lot of conflict of them trying to do stuff. It's essentially just at this point survival. Um, they they uh, now Reese they kind of hide out in a parking garage, and this is where you kind of get the whole backstory. Reese really breaks it down that like. This is a cyber cybernetic system uh, model 101 Terminator Cyborg. He's part man, part robot where his outer skeletal, like his outer system is flesh, skin, bone, the whole like flesh, human components. But underneath that is robotics. Um, it's the, the, he's the, he was like a second model. The first models were too easy to pick out and we were able to find them. These ones look too realistic. We have a hard time sometimes to yeah. just, like pick. That's why I, I had to wait for him to attack you to know because that like they're just that good at this point um right. so arguably he's the 800th story. model yes potentially um, what, I, what i did find out here just from a little bit of research is cameron said that arnold the, the robot isn't modeled after arnold every model of that robot looks like arnold and then the next model like the, another model all look like that one like so i guess in that universe when they built those models they all look like arnold that was the look right. of the yeah Right. That, so, so the, the 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 version of the Terminator that he is—that's the T portion, obviously—is a T eight hundred. Yes. The model, the Arnold Schwarzenegger skin, that's model one hundred and one. That's him. And they well, don't give him the eight hundred title in this movie. He's just known as nope, that model number. Nope. T T eight hundred is not spoken until I think the third movie. Oh wow, that's crazy. Uh, no, I think I think. I think I guess the second movie, because in the third movie, he's at uh, spoilers. Arnold's in uh, all of them. Uh, in the third movie, uh, I think he's technically he's a T eight fifty, and they there's little like little tidbits of exposition and stuff that that throw about around like oh it's a slight upgrade but not a full upgrade so it's not a T nine hundred it's a T eight fifty, but like the model 101 that's the model that looks like our like you wouldn't say um which that's actually a goof in the third movie where he calls himself a t101 the idiot um but <laughs> like you wouldn't say you wouldn't say like oh i've got a uh i've got a honda green you wouldn't say yeah. that like yeah. that's not that's not what you have like <laughs> 101 green. that's the that's the color that's the that's the the dressing yeah you know? um she also she also learns that uh she's like well can we stop this thing and he's like i don't know if i can with this modern day technology so like now you realize that like you're here to save the future of humanity um also i don't know if i can stop this unstoppable creature that is an unstoppable machine that is after you um so as and as as they keep hiding you learn more about uh sarah now learns that her mission is later on to have a son. That son mm -hmm. is essentially the one who's able to take down Skynet or who's able to like figure out most of it to do the most damage that's ever been done to Skynet when it comes to its machinery, its technology. So the, to keep Connor alive is insanely important. And now they know to get rid of Connor if they travel back in the past and kill his mother before conception they they essentially erase connor from existence so that's now we have the bread and butter of why we are where we are and the importance of her and the importance of everyone in this plot is all kind of told in this parking structure over an hour into yeah the film <laughs> yes um but like it once again it's one of those things too if you watch the movie trailer they they you kind of know going in if you watch movie trailers what you're getting into but if you're just mm -hmm. like i'm just gonna watch this without that you're like oh this is wild you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. Um, that's why when I, that's why if i'm introducing somebody to this and they've never seen it mm -hmm. we don't watch any of that together we don't watch any of that together and if i do show them anything it's the original trailer for the second movie that just shows a bunch of t-800s on an assembly line and they're all getting the arnold schwarzenegger treatment yeah which they filmed, they they spent like three million dollars to film this thing just to be like, here, just so everyone understands, this is not the same one from the first one. Yeah, this is a like, if you see, if you know, spoiler alert, if you see the end of the first one, you know it's not the same one from the first uh -huh. one. But here's a way for you to better understand that. I'll I'll say this too. I I love the fact, like I'm actually excited for the rest of these movies, and the main reason for that is. 
the CGI of the time, <clears throat> they do a great job, but it does lose its but it's special like it it it, it isn't it ages really well because how good they did it in the 80s but like you're like man i would love to see how these would now do in modern times like when people are like oh, i hate when they right. remake stuff like with modern technology you can make those those robots look way cooler and move better and do cool things with them and so it's like as a progressive you're like i want to see how this would do better with special effects well, as a, as a as a technical term, CGI, computer generated imaging, I don't know that there's any in this movie. Everything is puppets or stop motion yeah. or or animatronics, like that sort of stuff. I don't know that there is any actual CG. I mean, other than, I mean, okay, the bubbles, project, the bubbles and stuff at the effects. beginning, yeah. like they, they they didn't they didn't make the bubbles at the beginning, um, yeah. but but the they uh, the I think everything is, aspect is all practical, effects. right? Yeah. Right. After af- after this, uh, because like the P one thousand, um, and like the way that he functions and everything, that was part of the original story of this movie. Yeah. And and James Cameron was like, "Our budget is what? Yeah, we're not. We can't do that." He was going to use claymation for it. Wow. Well, the and then, and then there he, is a little bit of claymation. He, uh, I, I if if it's the scene, I think you're thinking of that we're like, about to get to. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. There's a ch- they're, now they're chasing each other again from the parking garage. They find them, they spot them. They're running again. Uh, Arnold, it, he's in a cop car, but he's also orchestrating uh, the cops to help him in a way. He's oh yeah, voice changing. He's changing yeah. his voice, and he's like, they're going this like. So Arnold knows, like, listen, I I don't my my well being means nothing as long as she mm-hmm. dies. I don't care. So if I can use modern day police to help me stop them. He uses it, which is he doesn't have to do paperwork. What does he care? Exactly. (laughs) No, but there is a weird, uh, interesting point with this. So the chase happens. Um, Arnold kind of gets ejected out of the car. He gets shot in the face with a shotgun. Kind of. Yeah, he gets half ejected. He hits a wall, and the entire time I'm thinking to myself, like Arnold doesn't care. Our Terminator doesn't care that there's cops surrounding. Like. And he and Reese has to learn too, like, yo, these police will shoot you. Don't play no games. And, he, and then right. she kind of tells him to surrender. But Arnold runs. He 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 leaves the scene. Like he kind of has them dead to rights if he goes after them. But for some reason, he decides I'm gonna bail here, which is an interesting choice for the the movie. Like this is the only part where I was like, why? Right. But then you find and I, it's probably just to kind of put more special effects in or to kind of show like more cool scenes. But he goes sure. to an apartment building that somehow he acquires. They don't say how or why or when, but he has his own apartment spot. Um, no idea. But in this, apartment I, th- I building, think he I think he kills the guy that lives there. Because there's later the line of like, hey, buddy, you got a dead cat in there. Yeah, yeah. And then he scrolls through all of his awesome potential responses. <laughs> like, a, um, like a RPG video game. Fuck yep. off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, uh, uh, counter- counterpoint to him running away, I think I think later on in the movie, we learn that, because I know what you're getting at here already. I think later on in the movie, we learn that uh, the theory here it doesn't necessarily make sense. I think he leaves because it's like a police are involved. I know how police work. I know what this is going to be when they see me dressed like this, looking like this, get out of this car, their attention goes to me. And then they think, and then they think, okay, here's this guy that's very armed and clearly very dangerous. uh, And here's this, looks like a waitress who's cowering in fear and screaming and not running from us, but running from him. Maybe we should look at him. Meanwhile, he could say, okay, I'm going to disappear. And then she will be in police custody and I'll know exactly where to go. That's a good point. I didn't, I didn't break it down like that. Uh, but Cannon, it shows, that's just a thought. Yeah, no, I, I, that's, that's good booking. I like it. You made it made sense. Uh, unlike the undertaker showed up a mania anyway. Um, oh, why wasn't it? Why didn't glass shatter? And the, like, <laughs> I was just waiting for it. I was like, Oh, I know where this is going. And then the lights went out and I went, that's not the right one. You guys, I would, have hated, I would have hated either one of them to be honest with you. I think that well, yeah. that's, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. D- um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so 
he goes back and he's he's doing surgery on himself. He's fixing his components. I thought maybe he was too injured. He kind of wanted to recoup a little bit, uh, maybe get some new guns because he has guns hidden all over this apartment as well. He fixes Under the his thinnest eye. mattress in the world. Yeah, uh, <laughs> fixes his eye, like his eye is damaged, so he he kind of pops out the human eye, and then his robot eye is now kind of exposed. Off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you and then you kind of start seeing that he is a machine because you now you see his components, mm-hmm. which all practical effects looks cool. I like the claymation robotic Arnold head, like the, yeah. when when it's clearly not Arnold, but it's a robot. It still looks right. kind of good. Like it looks good. It looks. If they, if they, if they, if somebody made something like that today on the same budget, it would not look that good. I agree. Like I've oh, seen, yeah. like. <sighs> Like even action figures today don't even look like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it it that is the one the one place where as as like a puppet or or clay or whatever it is that it does it does show its age, in in my opinion. I knew um, someone was gonna say it in the chat. The ultimate level. People are so mad at me that I'm so upset about this Undertaker spot at WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah, I'm trying so hard. I mean, cool. I'm in. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool, but it didn't make sense. Mm. You had the whole person who was involved in the story. Have them run everybody away. That's what you do. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Anyway. anyway it's uh, fine. Uh, so there's Arnold. There's Arnold missing one eye, both eyebrows, most of his hair. Uh, and Arnold shaved his eyebrows for, for the post on fire scenes. He shaved his eyebrows. Yeah. And he was so afraid that they would not grow back correctly. He had them insured. He got eyebrow Smart. insurance. Eyebrow insurance. <laughs> um, I, oh, I was talking about him getting Man caught involved, but you're also not wrong. All right. So now they're in custody, and Reese starts telling more. Like, he's just spilling his guts to the cop about future time travel and what the world's going to be. Very irresponsible of Reese at this point in time, but I understand where he's coming from, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he explains to them that there's there's a uh, they use this special device to travel, the Terminator went through first, he went through second, and whatever would have helped them travel is now destroyed, and they're stuck here. No matter how this plays out, there's no way that either one of them can go back, and nobody else can come through. But we all know there's a part two, so to be continued on that. Um, and all, all this is going down. Uh, Arnold now, Terminator, shows up to the police station. He comes up. He kind of, they like, he's like, I'm here for Sarah Connor. She's upstairs. She's giving a statement. So now he knows she's there. And he kind of like, in a good cyborg way, kind of looks around, mm-hmm. assesses everything, probably in his brain counting or maybe using technology or whatever it may be, and then goes, I'll be back. And he leaves. I'll be back. There it is. There's the number two. We did it. He goes out and he just drives his car through the front doors. And he is just laying to waste the LAPD. Yep. Yeah. You let somebody know you'll be back. And as you do, you drive your vehicle into the building. Yes. Those are the uh, rules. I'll be back. Vehicle into the building. Great scene. Uh, yep. Just it's He's just blowing everybody away. Um, mm-hmm. John then breaks out, gets her out. They run. Um, they're Kyle. Kyle. Sorry. Kyle Reese. Yeah, John, um, John isn't breaking out of anything yet. Give yeah. it like nine, <laughs> ten months. He'll break out. Well, he's about to break out soon, but in a different way. Um, they another chase chase scene happens. They're underneath a bridge. They're talking more, and then that's when Sarah starts finding out that you know more about it. And he's like, "Hey, I John is like a, a, a hero of mine. Like he's someone who's done so much for me. And 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 if I can meet the great Sarah Connor of everything he told me about you, the like legend. he's like he's he's fanboying a little bit. He's marking out for yeah. Sarah Connor. Like, Friggin' you know Mark." What I mean? like, <laughs> he's, he's he's super into john like john's his boy he's like yo like we kind of look alike and i'm like oh i see what's about to happen here um so yeah all this is going down they're under the bridge uh she dreamed about dogs he dreamed about more post-apocalyptic stuff um so then uh terminator now is trying to figure out where they go they go and book a hotel room uh while they're in the hotel room she calls her mother and she's like, Mom, I can't tell you exactly where I am, but I'm at I'm, I'm safe. I'm at a hotel. Here's the name of the hotel just to give you a little bit of something just to go off of. Uh, everything's going to be fine. You know, I love you. Goodbye. Cuts to the mother's house. 
and it's it's a Terminator, and he's using voice changing equipment again because before he left, um, that one scene, he does take her address book, and he uses the address book to find out where her mother lives, so then he can kind of calculate and maybe get ahead of finding her. Smart, smart move. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then they have her and her and Kyle hook up. That's the uh, and that's where little baby John is born right then and there in this hotel room. Um, well, he's not if born, you didn't see that coming. Yeah, he's conceived. The the yeah. deed has been done, uh, which is a weird move for Reese here. Like, but it's gotta happen. Let's break this. I know, but, but like, it has to happen. How does he know it's him though? I, he's gotta know. He's got. You but think? like, it's that we like. I feel like I feel like it's one of those things where par- paradoxical bullshit aside. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, if I tell him this happens, it's going to screw everything up. They got to naturally have this chemistry. This is John talking. They got to have this natural chemistry. (laughs) Like, hey, man, uh, here's this picture of my mom. I'm going to give it to you to hold on to it forever. Isn't she hot, hot, bro? Isn't she hot? hot. (laughs) You think you think. At the age of layers to this, there's a lot at the age that that Kyle Reese would have been on on judgment day which uh, he may not have even been born yet no you think he wouldn't be you think he would be even more like maladjusted like you think he would be way more socially awkward right yeah especially if it's just like okay uh reese come here you're 18 now you get this picture of my mom happy birthday (laughs) <laughs> look at it every day do uh there's really no whatever you want with it in this in this age you know whatever do, do whatever you want with it <laughs> whatever you want and just telling all these awesome stories about how awesome she is john john's probably lying first of all he's grooming <laughs> little reese exactly he groomed his <laughs> dad and pimped out his mom from 40 years in the future it's crazy or There's, he's just he's just a really like he come from the future where maybe it's like a Roddy Piper uh Lords of Frogtown situation where there's not a lot of maybe women and he goes back in time and he's like I can mess things up here but uh your boy shooting a shot you know what I mean she's looking yeah. good we just went through I almost died six times like I don't know oh I man what Terminator. a story that would be I don't know if I could be the Terminator like maybe I mess up the future but. Sarah's looking kind of good. <laughs> you know, it can go either way. It could be grooming, Wait, what, or what, he's just a scumbag who shot a shot. <laughs> and, you what know what, what I mean? none of us know, what none of us know is in the future, in Kyle Reese's other pocket, is a picture of John Connor's dad, who is not him. And he's and it's just like you gotta memorize both of these so you know who they are. And then he goes back in time and he meets Sarah Connor in person. And he goes, you know, she kind of fine. She's kind of. <laughs> I don't know that we need to uh, meet the dad. He's kind of a dick anyway. I didn't think he. Remember that one time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just it's an interesting dynamic. Like, right. Um, yes. Yeah. So Terminator finds them. They're already cleaned up. They're good to go. You know, the the, the seed has been planted. Um, and uh, <laughs> it, it it has now another chase scene, foot scene, car chase scene. Um, the cool part about this one is, is is there's a whole lot going on. Like he gets in a fuel mm-hmm. truck, there's a bomb planted on it, all this nuts. But the entire time it's going down, my favorite detail in this entire chase scene is he's so messed up at this point. His face is half exposed. The red mm-hmm. eye is showing. And every time they show him in the truck chasing them on foot, you can see through the front windshield and you see yeah. the red eye. Yeah. That's a cool detail. Love it. Like, that yeah. long shot where you're just like, ah, he's in there. Yeah, it's I, it's it always caught my attention the entire time they pan to it because it's like, it's a detail that I think a lot of movies would have left out, yeah. especially in the '80s. But they're like, no, like no, that red light. I don't know how we're doing it, but you need to be able to see that he's in the front seat of that truck the entire time. I thought it was a cool detail, um, and it's you, terrifying. Yes, very much so. Like, and imagine being in their position too, because you—that's what you do as a moviegoer. Is you're 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 watching it, but you're also feeling what they're feeling, and to know that they could be 
blocks and blocks and like miles ahead and turn around and still just see that. Yeah. It's just like, oh, and, and, oh. and I know Cameron doesn't like the set fact that he made a horror movie here, uh, but he did because every essentially movie or video game that was made for Terminator ever since captures that like you're just hopeless like you yeah. don't beat these things like you just right. survive you know what i mean yeah, um, aside from the ones where you play as arnold yes and then, <laughs> those ones are obviously a little different but yeah. any any terminator game where you play as a human it's like i, I, I could tell you firsthand that just from pl having played said games like something pops up and you see that it's made of metal and you're freaking out yeah, you're like, uh, what do yeah, I, I run? Right. Yeah, you just run. But it was just, um, oh, and mm, it was just recently my birthday, and uh, like family members and stuff, and they're like, oh, you want anything for your birthday? You want and I was just like, Terminator Resistance. It's a video game. I don't feel like buying it myself, but if somebody buys it for me, I can play it before I do this podcast. What, what, what's this and, that on now? Uh, it's uh, all the modern stuff. Okay, I didn't it, know they it, made it. it, only, it more, it, more recent one. Uh, it only came out. Terminator Resistance was probably 2022, 2023. I think the last it's, Terminator it's game I played was like Xbox 360. Oh, absolutely. 100% yeah. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machine. Yeah. I, I played like, it. I, I beat it in a day. day. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. But that one too was like, it was more running and hiding until, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But um, yeah. So, oh, if Chuck blows up. Oh, there was a bunch on the 360. Yeah. Chuck blows up. He's on fire. Uh, excellent use of green screen oh good job jim cameron yeah uh is he dead who knows um they have their moment where they they embrace and then up out of the rubble a fully exposed robotic creature is now and that that is the nightmare yeah. that's the that's the that's the nightmare that's the catalyst that's the f literal fever dream that set the whole thing in motion Yes, so because that was that. That is a, one of the first fact, fun facts I read. That this whole entire movie was based off a fever dream, and that's the scene mm -hmm. that he wrote the entire movie based off of. More, more or less. Yeah, I think in the uh, dream, I think it had. I think the I think the robot had like knives for fingers or something in the dream. Of course, maybe he had just watched. Maybe he had just watched like Nightmare on Elm Street or something. Yeah, um, they run into a lab facility, which is super convenient. Um, whole bunch of stuff going yeah. on there. They're, they're climbing through machines. They turn on other robots so he can't track them as well because the other robots and machinery are moving. Mm -hmm. right, it's weird that he's, they're using technology against technology. It was a, it was mm -hmm. a good bit. Uh, they put a pipe bomb in him, and the pipe bomb blows up, and you're like, we did it. We did it again. But uh, unfortunately, he dies from said explosion as well because he's right on top of the pipe bomb explosion. Uh, she breaks her leg. I think something – she's damaged her leg really bad. She's, she's messed up. Uh, Robot's still she alive. Some stairs, I think. Yeah, Terminator's still alive, but he's like a torso, and he's crawling at her. It's creepy as shit. The, the the animatronics in that face of the Terminator were really cool, like the way it like moved and looked around and had all those expressions. Insanely yeah. did, good. Did it have did it did it have the pupils yet? I don't think so. Where, where it dilates, that might be something they say for the second one. I don't yeah. remember. Um, she crawls through a machine that you can definitely tell is a tight compart spot. She gets yeah. through the other end. They, he's reaching out. She turns it on. It crushes him. And that's she finally defeated the Terminator. The eye turns off. Movie over. Shows her years later, a couple months later. She's essentially just driving and driving and driving. She's she's not look like she's like nomadic or who knows what her mission is now. But she's leaving like voice memos to herself to Connor of being like, hey, you know, I probably should tell you who your dad is. I'm going to. So maybe that's where you're saying. Connor's aware of who his dad is because she kind of says you have to send this guy and right. you know even though we've known each other for two hours a lot happened right. you know what I mean we loved each other for an eternity <laughs> um, which is so dumb good line and, good yeah. line <laughs> um, real fast as it crushes right before she turns the machine on she hits him with in my opinion I think Cameron was like this is the line if any line's gonna stick it's going to be this. You're terminated, fucker. No one used it. Oh, I'll be back. Everyone says and it. Come everyone says it all the time. Everyone <laughs> says it all the time. I, I just felt the way she delivered that line that everyone was like, put that on a t-shirt. That is what's going to set this movie That's apart. That's the one. 
and, and then everyone's like, I'll be back. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'll be back. The thing, the thing that Arnold said wrong. That's the one. Hasta la vista. That's not even yet. That's later, right? Where he says it yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hasta la vista, baby. He's so Let's pissed that, that he's so pissed that that line made it. He changed it because he wanted your terminated motherfucker to be the yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Next match. Mm. Next match. You do that. I'm I'm part of or I'm a, I'm in attendance. Right before you beat someone and you crush them, I just want you to be like, you're terminated. And you don't have to say the curse part, but just say you're terminated <laughs> so I can pop in my heart and soul. <laughs> I feel like, like that's that's something you save for like you're the final two in, in like a rumble situation. Yes. You hit them with that and then you dump them over the top. <laughs> you're terminated. Or depending, you know, or, you know, let's say, you know, you're the you're the big bad heel and you're going to lose. You hit them with that. You go to throw them. They, they Santino went around and they dump you out. Yeah. You know, good stuff. Great stuff. But yeah, did not catch it all except for Mr. Defarge says he uses it all the time, but I feel like this one <laughs> fell super flat, <laughs> but the way she delivered it, it was like, this is it. This is the one. <laughs> she owned that line. <laughs> she that is a, it is a great delivery. It's not a bad line. It's a, no. it's a, it's a, it's a really cute little gotcha. Yeah. You know, and he's you like, know, Come and me, like, you they, want to live? That's the one. That's the one that people. That's that's the right. runner up. I'll be back. That's you just know, that's, that's not even delivery. a phrase. <laughs> um. Yeah. So now, say, pregnant Sarah Parker's leaving voice memos saying about you Sarah know, Parker. Yeah, Sarah Parker. Sorry, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah from, Jessica from Parker. Sex in the city. Yeah, yeah. Sarah <laughs> Jessica Parker with her great hair shows up with two witches. Um. No. Uh. She's, <laughs> she's at a gas station in Mexico, and then. uh she gets conned out of some money from a photographer from a kid, you know, and that's the photo, you know, later on. Uh, yep. And then she just kind of drives. Oh, a storm's coming. I know. And she just drives into either mountains or clouds. Couldn't really tell. Oh. 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 Weird ending. Weird ending. Love it. So my question is, is that this is where I would love to know, like, because I didn't, we, I didn't grow up during this time, so that movie ends like that, and people are like, "What the fuck did we just watch? Are we getting a part two? Is there a part two? Like, she just drove. Like, where? What happens next? Like, how long do we have? I don't even know. How long do we have to wait from Terminator One to Terminator Two? Uh, I'm gonna look that up right now. Terminator Seven years. Seven years. So yeah. not from eighty four to from eighty four to ninety one. Yeah, that's a there's a gap there. Mm -hmm. And then there's an, it's, it's, I think it's like a, oh, I think it's like a 12 year gap between two and three. Yeah. And then they just, wow. I mean, and then they just started pumping them out like every four years. Yeah. Like, oh, we got, we get te technology is easy. We can, we can do this. No problem. Um, right. yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm very excited to do the rest of this franchise and keep doing, cause I really want to, uh, to do more when it comes to this too. yeah yeah the first one i just uh, want an excuse to hit and watch them all again i'm into it i'm totally the same uh so he he said this was a uh tumultuous experience making his debut uh, he made piranha 2 uh, and he had a favor dream of a metal death figure coming out of a fire and that's essentially where it started um uh she won so, so this ellison woman won a out of court settlement over the concept of Terminator. Oh yeah, it's because they, they um they wrote like two different episodes of uh, the Twilight Zone mm -hmm. that have like a that have like similar premises to it, and like a short story or something that also has like another similar premise to it. And they were like, the, and like, I think they were very very they were kind of kind about it where they were like, I really like your movie. It's really great. I think you stole my ideas. You know, and like I, in your in your facts there, do they do they have the the explanation of how that how that suit went? It, it didn't, but they did say here the next one is that James Cameron then sold the script for the movie for a dollar, one dollar to his to his producer friend. Yes, with the uh, promise that she get it get it purchased by a by a production company, and that he gets to direct. Mm -hmm. Because there's from what I from what I remember, there was a bunch of companies that were like, "Yeah, let's make this movie." Oh, James Cameron, we don't know who that is. We're like, we're, we don't want him to direct it. We want somebody else. And so she had to say no. 
uh, Lance uh, Herkishin, am I saying that right? Was the first actor to dress. Yeah, he was the first one to dress as a Terminator. Yep. Uh, we we talked we talked about this. Um, yep. They they did. OJ Simpson was considered. OJ Simpson just died today. How about that? Yesterday he died. He died. He died. Yes, right. I did. I did. Uh, uh, forget about that. When, uh, but he, they OJ Simpson was considered. The funny part is they wouldn't book him. Book him. There it is. The <laughs> yes. wrestling. The wrestling. <laughs> mm, I kept it out this whole time. Actually, they this did not. Auto. OJ wanted was OJ was supposed to play the T eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And and they didn't hire him. They didn't cast him. There's the word. They didn't cast him because they didn't think he would be believable as a bloodthirsty killer. Who would have thought? <laughs> full, full stop. Full stop. That's the end of the segment. Uh, speaking <laughs> of wrestling, did you know that Sting was supposed to play Kyle Reese and was offered three hundred fifty thousand dollars for it? No, not, that's a that's the, a fact that has not the wrestler the, thing. The, the the singer Sting. Um, oh, of the police. Of the police was offered to play uh, Kyle Reese, but uh, did not take the role. Um, well, that night with Sarah would have been a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> eight other, eight other people that watch this will get that joke. <laughs> other <laughs> musicians considered were Bruce Springsteen. Um, uh, other, and act, actors who were offered it were Matt Dillon, Kurt Russell, Tommy Lee Jones, Mickey Rourke, Michael O'Keefe, Scott Glenn, uh, Treat, Treat Williams, Christopher Reeves and Mel Gibson were all on the radar to play Kyle Reese. Yep. Mel Great. Gibson has gone on record as, uh, uh, as saying that he's really glad he didn't take the role because Arnold killed it. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, that's neat. The, I like Mel Gibson as an actor. Yeah. Uh, and I can separate the art from the artist there and just like Mel Gibson as an actor. Yep. Um, yeah. That's, that's pretty much the, the main ones that I got here. Mm-hmm. Um, Arnold or Arnold tried to change. I'll be back. Yeah. To, uh, uh, I will be back. Yeah. I will be back. Uh, but the reason being that the T 100 would not speak in contractions is what he said. Well, they're Arnold. experts in blending in. Of course he would speak in contractions. Arnold, what do you know? What do you know? Arnold <laughs> who booked this shit? Uh, Schwarzenegger only speaks 58 words this entire film. Hmm. Uh, Lin- Linda broke her ankle while shooting this movie. Uh, early on, too. Um, you can access the T eight one T eight hundred's points of views if you have an Apple II. Oh, and the old Max. Yeah, yeah. The, the Terminator Vision. It's it's just a um thing that Max do. It's like they're. It's not like they're rebooting thing. It's. <sighs> There's like a name for it. It's like a it's like a safe mode on the computer or something, yeah. or like a coding mode or something on the computer. In Poland, I've never the film had a Mac in my life. As electronic murderer. Yes, because uh, Terminator is a word in Polish. Interesting. And it and it means entrepreneur. Oh no, uh, apprentice. I think. So they were like they, they were like oh this will confuse people. But it was the '80s, so there was enough like bootlegs and pirates and 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 like people selling them out of their trunk that it went around without the subtitle. That by the time the second one came out, that everybody knew what a Terminator was. Yeah. So the uh, the subsequent movies were released without changed titles. Actor David Hyde Pierce has repeatedly denied that he's in the movie, um, but I guess he's the tanker truck hijacked. He was the he was driving the tanker truck that gets hijacked. And he yeah. denies it so hard that he got his all of his names stripped from the movie. <laughs> yeah, bad move on your he point. Just, we talked about yeah, this one, wow. I think, off off camera. The teaser. So we always talk about the movie guy this summer yeah. coming to the in thing. a world was, in a world where a man was conned by his mentor to go back in time to bang his mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, it was actually narrated. The the teaser trailer was narrated by the voice of Optimus Prime. Peter Cullen. There it is. Cullen? Cullen, yes. Cullen. Um, I so I get I often I don't know if it's the double L's, but Peter Cullen and Peter Weller, I I yeah, yeah. flip flop all the time and I've I, and I don't know why. Well that, that's just, pretty much it. Double that's, L's. that's all I got for the movie. You got some show and tell, you said, right? I do. I Let's do. And it, uh Another fun fact, kind of kind of a morbid one, but one that always impressed me is uh, when they're reassuring Sarah that like 
you know, everything's gonna be fine. You know, one, one of the things they say is there are 30 cops here that stand between anybody and you from, uh, including the, I believe, including the, uh, the guy that gets taken out with the car after I'll be back. Uh, I believe there's that. And then there are 29 shots fired after that, whether yeah. it's at somebody on camera or somebody off camera. So he, he doesn't miss a lot of was, bullets too. Whether it was Very on accurate. purpose or not, they definitely, you can account for him at least harming 30 cops. Yeah. Cause I don't think there's a shot he misses throughout the movie. Yeah. Like that would make sense. I suppose. Yeah. When he actually shoots, like he, he doesn't take a lot of like, he, I, I, maybe, maybe when he's shooting at the car, he's missing some shots. Um, here's the thing. A lot of that movie too. Terminators <laughs> double arm and shotguns and Reese is just yeah. one arm in those things. Bang. Just like, yeah. Impressive for race. Very impressive. I've, I've, I've never fired a shotgun in my life. It's terrible, but, <laughs> but I can only imagine that any of that is going to be stressful. I've seen <laughs> enough shots of people with even just prop versions, like holding it and then just like almost falling over. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can only imagine what, what like the kind of kick that's on I that thing. That video of the guy who's shooting the Magnum and it hits him in the face. Like, you mean to do that? He goes, you mean, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> he's, I did. He's bleeding. Oh, not the guy, not the guy that lets go. But the guy that he's like the instructor. He's the instructor. Yeah. And he hits him in the face. Yeah. Did you mean to do that? No, oh, yeah. um, uh, another random fun fact. Arnold trained so hard to work with firearms because for so, so there's all these facts about uh, like the training he did and the way that he said like a cyborg should act like this and the guy who plays a cyborg should act like this and he should do this for all this stuff. In an interview towards the end of filming Conan, uh, somebody was like, oh, what are some future projects you're working on? And referencing this movie said, oh, after this, I'm doing some shit movie that will just take a couple of weeks to film and, you know, we'll get it. We'll get it done. Wow. But he put all this thought and effort into it, but he just thought of it as some shit movie. And he has admitted that that's what he means because he has specifically gone back and taken that back. Yeah. I mean, so that's Arnold Schwarzenegger is definitely terminator like when you think terminator yes or you think arnold he's he's terminator more than any other role he's ever played yeah absolutely yeah. And like and it's 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 not what shot him to stardom um because obviously i mean obviously being you know mr universe uh, you know mr olympia like all that stuff obviously made him known and then he did hercules in new york which put his face on screen yep and then he did Conan. That's what like made him a star, arguably. Um, and then they were like, screw it. People can hear your real voice here. You have 23 lines of dialogue in this movie. Yeah. Um, cool. And then James Cameron said, you know what? You're a robot. You're going to have less than that. So he only has 13 or 18 or something in Terminator. Yeah. Um, you said what? He says 48 like, words in the whole movie or something? The whole movie, yeah. 58. Right, 58 words in the whole movie. But he like he went into all of this stuff to be like, I want to be like a machine. I want to be like a machine. I want to make sure people know I am a machine. I'm not acting like one. So he trained with these firearms. I brought us back. I did it. He trained with these firearms so long that he could like f- completely take them apart, clean them, and put them back together blindfolded because everything he had to do with a weapon, he wanted to be able to do without looking at it. Yeah. So he's looking around and he's doing stuff and then he's like, boom, click, reload, next thing, boom, click, reload, next thing. Like it shows and, and he, he, showed, and he, he looked be, very comfortable with guns. Uh, he also had to be ambidextrous, so he had to train with both hands, especially because especially when you have an assault rifle in one hand and a shotgun in the other. Um but uh yeah, trained trained his ass off, I guess. Yeah. So what are some show and tell? So I love the, the old school, not cool in high school. We used to do this. We would have being yeah. bring people being show and tell because it is really fun when um, not only just talking about the movie, but if you have collectibles or anything like that. So I really appreciate that you brought that and I'm excited to see what you have. Okay, obviously the posters are over your head and yeah, I framed it. This, this is, uh, this is my living room. These, these are what's behind me all the time. Um, when I get to sit in my living room, that is, um, that's and that's way off over there. That's the movie shelf. I have I have it, like seven to ten movies over there. Behind this lamp is the TV shows and anime and stuff, like, um, and wrestling. I just um, got into my first anime. I'm watching my first anime of all time. I'm three episodes yeah? in. Yeah, yeah. Which one? I'm watching Demon Slayer. Okay, I I want to get into that one. I yeah. do. 
when, when it, you're going to have an anime podcast in no time. Yeah, I'm sure. I, like, I've, oh, I've been hating anime for a long time. I've tried really hard. I just can't get into them. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm into Demon Slayer yet, but I'm tolerating it, if that makes sense. Okay. Now, have you watched any of the... any? Of, and I apologize to all the anime fans that watch this. I know there's a name for them. But have you gotten into any of... Or tried any of the co- like comedy ones? No. Be- uh, I, I probably should watch a comedy one. Uh, two. Top of my head. Uh, Oran High School Host Club. Okay. Uh, uh, I can write these out and send them to you also. Please, because please. that's Isn't not easy to remember. One? Isn't there a wrestling there, one? Th- there's a, so there's if you're talking about ultimate muscle yes yeah, yeah. ultimate muscle that's very it's got it's comedy moments and it's serious moments um or in high school host club it's very comedy it's it's a i mean it's a high school comedy so you have to turn your brain off and just let it be funny um and then fruits basket um fruit basket is it's more fantasy and and stuff and it's okay. but it's but it is still like teens um but i i've watched or in high school host club start to finish like three times Okay, I struggle um, with anime. Real side quest, real quick, crazy side quest is, yeah. is like all the voice acting to me sounds very similar. Like it's hard to differentiate each character because they all have that really high, really, um, really high dub, dub or sub. Uh, I think it's it's. I'm reading. I think I'm really no, no. It's dubbed. You're, it's dubbed. Yeah, it's, it's dubbed. It's, so it, yeah, yeah. It's dubbed. You can hear the American voices, but they still okay. Yeah. So it's dubbed. So one of the so one of the issues then is they all sound really really similar because they're all the same actors. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that, that's drugs. That's that's hard for me to get into. Uh, and there's there's too much crying. There's so much crying going on in anime. Everyone's crying all the time. And there's, there's a, a lot, lot of crying of, in Japan. They're very open to their emotions. I, I I'm an they're American. Not, they're I'm, not still, like I'm a, still trying to figure mine out, and I don't want to watch somebody else do it. <laughs> cry, cry right now. I, I got, I, you want to? I do. Just I really do. <laughs> do it. Um, and do it. there's the internal <laughs> monologue coming out with the external monologue, and not knowing when they're doing each one because it's a different culture. I guess you would say. I yeah, okay, that that's fair. Well. Yeah. Usually, there's like the little bit of like the the reverb, mm-hmm. like like a, like that when they when it's the 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 inner monologue. But um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm uh, giving it a shot. Yeah. Um, you, have you tried Soul Eater? I think I have the entire series on Blu ray. No, at my feet but when, right when I was pitched a whole bunch of them, everyone was like, I, I said, everyone's like Dragon Ball. I said, I tried Dragon Ball as a kid. I didn't like it. I tried Try Attack on Titan. I didn't like it. I tried the only ones I really liked that I kind of want to go back and buy. I loved as a kid Speed Racer. I love okay. Speed Racer. Um, I know it's not Japanese anime, but I like the Boondocks. It's, okay. That was a fun one. Um, no, I'm not huge into anime, so you're probably gonna name stuff that I've never seen or heard. Of. And I think that's pretty much a, okay. the limitation. But the, the, the demon demon slayer is the one I was pitched to. It's not terrible. Yeah. It's 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 got a little bit of a horror element. It's 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 superhero element. It's 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 fun so far. I recommend trying Soul Leader. I recommend trying any of the 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 comedy ones. Yeah, there's a name for them. Oh, I recommend while trying we're any of the comedy Netflix, ones. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a whole bunch of Godzilla anime, so I'm gonna try those yep. too. Do that. Send so me the ones that are good. Love, Just kidding. I'll watch any of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any of them. Uh, if you want to, if you want to plow through every Godzilla movie, also give me some time. Twenty twenty five. Yeah. We'll, we'll knock them out. You're gonna see um, a lot of Mister Defars on this podcast. <laughs> I like talking about movies. So do I. It's so much fun. And because I'm just gonna throw facts at you and and opinions, and I'm gonna be like, this is a fact of a thing that happened on the thing, and this is something that I think sucks, but it's just me. If and you I enjoy it, that. you I enjoy it. That's fine. Off of. Yeah. Right. And I'm Show never gonna be that guy that says. I'm never gonna be that guy that says you only like this because you're dumb, or oh, I I like it and you didn't because I'm smarter than. You. I'm never gonna be that guy. Everything yeah. everything is subjective. Everything yes. art is subjective. Period. All artists. Yes. All right. Let me get to these show and tells. It's past my bedtime, uh, and I just kind of have stuff. It, it's only three things, and two of them are books. I feel real boring. Um, but no, this is uh one of my favorite things I've ever read in my life. I can't tell where the glare is. Yeah. Here we go. It's called Terminator and Philosophy. Okay. Uh, this is a real book. This is a real book in real life. This is not a fake cover on a thing. This is a real book with real words and everything. Uh, there's a whole series. It's actually you. Uh, you'll get a kick out of this. It's actually the uh, the Blackwell uh, philosophy and pop culture series. Um, look that up. Blackwell philosophy and pop culture series. They have 
Iron Man and Philosophy, which is also on my shelf. They have X Men and Philosophy, X Files and Philosophy, Lost and Philosophy, Terminator need, and Philosophy. I need to interview this guy. Horror and Philosophy. Um, but no, but I. There are so many things that I did not think about with the with the series and with with particularly for some reason I feel like this is really really heavy in into Terminator Two. Um, but there's so many things that I did not even think about until I read this book. And it was like, what, I mean, just a, a quick, quick dive into Terminator 2. One of the lines in Terminator 2 that's a, that's a throwaway line is spoken by the Terminator. He says, I cannot self-terminate. Why would that be built in? How many of the Terminators pre T-800 were offing themselves and why were they doing it? Because they're supposed to be super advanced artificial intelligence, right? They have they have sympathy for humanity, right? Do they know that what they're doing is wrong, so they're offing themselves? So then they yeah. have to build it into the programming. Maybe. What? what? They have a heart. or and I'm going to blow your mind with this without getting into it. In Terminator Two, the spoilers for Terminator Two. So turn this off if you want to wait. Um, sorry, my dog's head's about to pop up over here. Maybe I love butt. it. All um, doggos are, are are welcome on uh, this pod. Uh. I'll blow your mind with this real quick, and it might make sense to you, uh, but spoilers for Terminator 2 and and Arnold's involvement in it. Uh, in Terminator 2, in the, in the, in, in, I won't even say that much. The T-800, Arnold Schwarzenegger, plays John Connor's mother, and Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton, is John, Con- John Connor's father. When you okay. watch the movie, think about that, and it will... It it should make sense. Okay. Uh, and if it doesn't, we'll talk about it when when we when we do that uh, when we do that particular episode. Also, if you if if you can and you want to watch watch the theatrical version and then watch the extended director's version. Okay. Because the extended director's kind of just has some really fun stuff in it. Um, show and tell number two. Uh, this is less Terminator related, more James Cameron related, but it's fine. Uh, this is a book. This is like the largest book that I own. It is just called Tech Noir. Tech Noir is what James Cameron said the genre of Terminator is. Uh, he argued it's not a horror movie. It's a Tech Noir movie because it is sci-fi and it is futuristic, but it looks gritty. It looks dark and and everything is damp for some reason. And <laughs> like yeah. it's, he, he said, he said the same thing uh, of like Blade Runner. You know, Blade Runner is tech noir. Like, that's what it is. But this is just a book of, like, James Cameron concept art. Um, I don't know. I don't know how well you can see anything at home, but like, it's the, here's the loader from Aliens. Here is, uh, obviously a Terminator. That's one of the little blue cat people from Avatar. Like, and there's just so much cool stuff in here with a forward, uh, by Guillermo del Toro of all people. Um, this on the back, like just the whoop, there we go. Just the outfit alone gives me alien vibes while the flying thing gives me avatar vibes while the thing's machine arm gives me terminator vibes. Like, and it's just a really cool, just dive you into an avatar. Book. Are you an avatar guy? I think avatar was fine. I didn't like it. Um, I don't think it was great. I don't think it was as good as some people do. Um, but I think, uh, I think I, I don't, I don't think it had to be as long as it was. I also don't know that you needed to invent a new kind of camera to film it, Jim Cameron. <laughs> I don't think you needed to do that. Good job doing it. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, James Cameron, I'm sure you're watching this. Yes. Remember, they took, uh, they took that fantastic 3D camera technology, and the next thing they used it on was Resident Evil Afterlife. Just, yeah. just a thought. James Cameron Avatar or the last Airman? James Cameron Avatar. I think we're talking James Cameron Avatar strictly. Is that correct? Uh, I have you, misunderstood podcast questions. Oh, what do I prefer? The yeah. the 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 cart- the air bending, the bending version. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to say cartoon. I don't because I'm gonna mess people up that think it's an anime. I don't want to say anime because then I'll piss people off that say it's a cartoon. So the 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 bending version, the one with with Aang and Katara and friends and the the big six legged bison and the little Momo the monkey. I I I that's yeah they're happy that's, they're happy with the answer. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> um, I apologize. This is this is a this is my phone. My phone is this big, and it is 
six feet from me, so I can't <laughs> see any of the. I apologize to. All right, what's what's why, item number three? Item number three. It's going to be the last one um, because I could not find the fourth thing, and all it was was a keychain anyway. Item number three. Um, oh, but people that travel with me, they know I have a small version of this in my car. Um, item number three. I see it the whole time I was looking at it. Look at that. Um, this looks like a skull. It's not. Um, it's actually a mask. <laughs> oh, wow. But it is obviously a Terminator skull mask. Um, I got this 800 gazillion years ago uh, from a website whose name I cannot remember. Um, they also sold like fantasy weapons and stuff like that. And then I just randomly came across this resin skull mask. Uh, you can see little eye holes in here uh, because it's supposed to light up. You can actually see on the back. It's not that it matters. You can see on the back where the wiring goes for the lights for everything. And they just didn't have any lights left. So I also got it at a discount. Nice. Um, just some writing on that. There is some writing on this. So uh, I have four different, uh, I have four different signatures on this thing also. So um, those of you who are super duper excited right now, yourself included, no, I do not have any of the big ones. Uh, <laughs> here's James however, Cameron's autograph. <laughs> however, um, wouldn't that be great though? Uh, so for, the first one I got is right here. Uh, uh, Bill <laughs> No, oh, I wish, I wish. I never got to meet Bill Paxton before he passed away. Yeah. Um, but uh, the first one, uh, it's up at the top. I'm trying not to show it too hard because uh, they did write my real name in there. Um, but it's Summer Glau. Summer Glau, who is uh, River Tam in uh, Firefly and Serenity. Uh, she also played Cameron, um, the uh, the Terminator Protector in Sarah, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles. So uh, I've got that one up there. This one over here, Lance Hendrickson, the name that we've been trying to say all night. Lance Hendrickson. Lance Henriksen has aged, um, and he thought that this was a skull of, uh, if you can read that right there, he thought this was the skull of Bishop, his character in Aliens. Uh, and he was very, very excited to be signing uh, a Bishop skull, and I was very, very excited to not correct him at all, <laughs> because he was just excited to be there and excited to be chatting with me, so I was just excited to chat back. Um, this right here, though. No, we'll do that one last. <laughs> this over here. Uh, there's so many letters in this name. It's Christiana Logan. I believe it's Christiana Logan, not Christiana Logan. I could be wrong. Folks at home, correct me. Miss Logan, you can correct me. She was the TX in Terminator 3. Spoilers. Um, the TX being the uh, very vaguely sexist name given to the first female Terminator. Because, of course, uh, women only have X chromosomes. So you got to throw that in there. It's the first one with no number. Anyway, right here, right at the very top, right at the forehead, right in the middle. That is Michael Bean. That is our savior. That is Kyle Reese himself. Um, I can send you photographs that I have with him if you want. I don't know that you would use them for anything. Um, he was very, very nice. He was very, very cool. I told him that, uh, I hate that he wasn't involved in any Terminator movies after the second one. <laughs> Uh, he was an alien, yeah. Uh, which was which was two projects later for uh, for Jim Cameron, and he was also in the Abyss, which was one project later for Jim Cameron, I think. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, uh, we don't have to get into the special effects of the Abyss, but they were great. Um, but uh, James Cameron just kind of said, "Michael Bean, you want to be my uh, guy and everything." Sweet. I love it. My your your j pure joy and excitement for a movie is exactly why I started this because I just I love when the guest is just passionate about what they talk about and it makes me more passionate <laughs> about what you're watching and it makes me more excited to watch the rest of the films. Uh, Son, yep. thank you so much. Uh, yeah, show and tell. Show and tell in the next one. Uh, I'll show you the tattoo across my back that you can find by just looking uh, by just looking on the internet hard enough. Yeah, because <laughs> have I told just... have I told you what it says? Do you know what it says? No, Off the top of your head. I yeah, do not. see, it's there. It's right in front of everybody, and it's a and it's a Terminator tattoo, and no one, nobody, nobody really thinks about it. They're it just like, you yeah, will be terminate, <laughs> terminate this. <laughs> <You're> terminated, fucker. <laughs> no, no, it's not that one. It's also not Oliver Bark or come with me if you want to live. It's it's, it's, it's on your back. <laughs> it is. 
<laughs> How do I? We did something. No. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 for the next one, send me photos and we'll put them, we'll pop them up on screen. All right. I didn't yeah. expect show and tell. I love that. I think that's a great idea. I mean, I could just take my shirt off or something. So, we'll time. do it for the next one. Not we'll right. do it for the next one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, pa- shirtless Sunny, we got to say that for part two. We can't just give that away. Yeah, okay. No, okay. That's fair. Or yeah, yeah. again, or you just go on IWTV online. or YouTube or anywhere. Right. Be shirtless a lot. <laughs> Sunny to find shirtless. I'm going to be monitoring that search, by the way. I'm just going to be like, how many people have searched for this in the last 24 yeah. hours? <laughs> Hopefully, not a lot. Just uh, you, probably. Just It'll just be me. Yeah. We'll <laughs> uh, Well, that'll do it. For Not Cool in High School presents not uh I'm sorry, ABJ Podcast presents Not Cool in High School 128, The Terminator with Sonny Defarge. What a blast. I had such a good time. Um Same. like I said, other episodes coming up that are more based in the pop culture will be Harleen Lopez talking Saw, myself and Mr. Radkey talking 1989, uh, and my, myself and Kim Rose talking Megan. And that's that's gonna be all the stuff we do this month. Next month, I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more and we'll be sneaking in either uh mr defarge or harleen for saw 2 and terminator 2 but man what a fun time uh if you guys are interested as well on the 20th i'll be doing commentary for new uh new era pro wrestling uh in north pocono high school uh you can if you're not local you can still buy tickets send me a screenshot of your tickets and i will contact the promoter and say they are either comp tickets for a family at the door or they're a donation based on the podcast so you can still support independent wrestling even if you're not in the area and can't show up and we could use the power of the abj podcast to help out here's the cool thing two people of the podcast network have done it i've gotten messages of two tickets purchased general admission now if they're comped and they're given away to a family they can now take that money for the door and put it towards merchandise that puts more money in wrestlers' pockets because it is hard and money is tough. So the fact that two people were able to do that is so, so cool. And it's, uh, that, that warms my heart more than anything because the ability of this podcast is 100% going to pass it along to independent wrestling in one shape or fo- fashion or the other. So that means a lot to me. So check out uh, links below for the new era as well as that, or just give me a message and I'll get you steered in the right direction, but that'll do it. Had an absolute blast. Where, where could people find you if they want to support you? Links are below as well. Uh, Northeast Ohio. If you want to come meet, find me in person, but I imagine you meant on social media, but that's going to be, uh, I'm at Sunny Defarge everywhere, um, everywhere that I have that is. So that would be not Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I do not have a Sunny Defarge Facebook page because I don't want one. I don't um, blame you. But I, I might be making one soon because I keep getting booked by more and more people that just use Facebook or their largest audience is Facebook. And that does make sense because it has been around the longest. Yeah. Uh, so one of these days you may finally see a tweet from me that says, come find me on Facebook. Um, uh, I do not have a TikTok yet. Oh, I said yet. Uh uh, but those are the places. Um, yeah. You want to see any matches? Those are uh, those are all over the place online. Um, you want to just chat about wrestling? I respond to some DMs. Um, but I. What, what if they're Terminator related? If someone's like, "Yo, check out this cool Terminator thing," and they tag you. Listen, if there's something Terminator related, I'm 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 always down. All right, I'm always down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure you go follow him on social media. Leave a little comment that hey. Great job on ABJ podcast or just become a fan of this man. I love him to death. He's a super nice. If you think I did a good job. Yeah. If you think he did, I don't care. You don't have an opinion. (laughs) I'm telling you he did. Uh, Well, that'll do it. Here's some music by the Converse kid. We'll see you on the next time. We're out of here. Converse kid again. Thanks for watching this presentation. Like, share, and subscribe for more.